Hallo. Hallelujah. And so, let's go now into the message of the Lord. And this is all about the lesson in the life class student manual in the week 3. And it's all about the best experience of your lives. And I would like to talk, especially for those students who will be going back to school in September here in the UK and going to the universities because out there you are exposed especially those in the UK exposed to the bombardment bombardment of the enemy using the schools to teach us against God and true enough my brothers and my sisters even in the church the reason why you might not be so passionate for Christ you might still be resisting what we are talking about about loving God loving others go preach your gospel lives win people to Jesus and for the leadership, especially for the equipping process, that we will train them, teach them to remember what Jesus have taught long time ago that still is valid, relevant in our time. And so, my brothers and my sisters, I want every one of us to really be sure about the vision of God. And this is all that the church Pagasa Center has got involved and it is about the G12 and now I would like to tell you especially those who somehow are still skeptical regarding G12 G12 is all about God G12 is all about the governance that God wants us to imitate G12 is the way our Lord Jesus Christ gathered 12 people so that Jesus poured his life upon these 12 people so that the 12 disciples and the 12 eventually becoming apostles were people who reached out to do the same process of giving their lives to 12 people and we in our church understand supposed to be the exponential growth that is expected and so there are still people even among us who have been here for quite some time because seemingly their vision it's not so clear that as if what we are doing as a church in preaching our lives, winning people, gathering these people so that we can train them so that they too will eventually be sent is not that clear. And that's the reason why my brothers and my sisters, you old timer in Pagasa Center, you are included. We are all included. In this message that God wants us to recover our sights, especially you, especially you, the students in the life class. And hopefully, your minds are now being changed as the Bible is talking about in Romans chapter 12 verse 2. That our minds should be renewed by the working of the Holy Spirit no longer attracted to the pattern of the world but will be having the mindset of Jesus and the mindset of Jesus is the mindset of the Father and the mindset of the Father is about human the human kinds that he created in his image not ending up in perdition that every one of his creations will be brought back into his family. And this is all about we would like 
and especially being your pastor, I would like to really for you to see that this should be clear in our minds. Recovering your sight. And so, my brothers and my sisters, as I have uh, introduced, I would like to start in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Many of us, yes, maybe you say there is God. But maybe the way you know God is, is still flimsy is still blurred that you're supposed to be response to this almighty God should be so passionate and committed and devoted that we can do effectively successfully what God wants us to do And so, it will always begin. And there is this beginning. And the beginning is all about God. And I hope you will listen so that you will understand, so that you will believe that we have God on our side. And God loves us. His purpose is not to harm us nor destroy us. His purpose is to really take care of us, do everything, so that we can be back into His fold. And hopefully no one will question, how did He do that? Because if you have been with Pagasa Center, you should know the answer. That for God so loved the world in John chapter 3 verse 16. He gave His only begotten Son to die on the cross. So that you and I, you, you, you we will not perish but have everlasting life. It all begins in knowing who God is. Appreciating who God is. And eventually loving God with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our strength, with all our souls. And if God says, love your neighbors, there should be no question in really believing in loving our neighbors. And not just loving in our minds, but loving with actions. Hallelujah. And so my brothers and my sisters, The book of Genesis is foundational for the rest of the Bible, especially verse 1. And so even in the verse 1, if you believe and you really get this, it will be easy for you and me, my brothers and my sisters, to really be participant in the work that God wants us to do. And again and again, I will always tell us in Ephesians, God in the beginning created all things. And He has this vision. And He knows that there is a work to do. And He has made us as His body for the purpose of doing a specific job. And that's to bring humanity back to his fold. But that is a process, of course. And you, life class student, how I am appreciative, uh, appreciating those testimonies of changed lives, rising up levels of faith among those students in the life class. Praise the Lord. And it's only... By the working of God among us that it will work. It is all by His grace. Hallelujah. And so, now I would like us to ask ourselves. Is there really God? Or there is no God? Because this is 
what the whole world is up in arm against God. Everything now in our time, in the school especially, they promote there is no God. I'm now 71 years old. And when I started able to see and understand my education, I remember that I was taught that I belong to the kingdom of animals, animal kingdom, homo sapien. And from that time, I believe I came from the monkey. But praise the Lord. When God had an encounter with me, when He saved me, I started to see and praise the Lord, I am believing. I see clearly today. And today I would like you to hopefully say, you clearly see God. You know who He is. Yes, you don't see Him because He is a spirit. But we see Him in the spirit. That's the reason why in John chapter 4, Jesus told the Samaritan woman how to worship God. And He said to the Samaritan woman, God is a spirit. And those who worship God should worship them in spirit and truth. And so my brothers and my sisters, I pray to God that we see God as a spirit through His truth. And today I will be talking about all this and hopefully I can do and, and impart to you clearly that after this, you should have recovered your sight. Hallelujah. And so, Thank God for all of you who believe that there is God. And God is God in the beginning. No one created God. He is the Alpha and the Omega. And so, my brothers and my sisters, especially for you students, especially for those who are going to university, you will expect a lot of bombardment by the enemy using different people and this is really something that is a truth because there's a lot of people who are blinded by the God of this time the God of this age and if we will not go in battle we will remain under the blinding power of the enemy of God. And so in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4, it reads, But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God should shine on them. And so my brothers and my sisters, that is the condition why there are a lot of people who really are rejecting what we are talking about, about God, about heaven, about hell about the second coming of Jesus, about the preciousness of the souls, that you and I should be going after them, seeking them like lost sheep, so that we can bring them into the fold of Jesus, that they also will see the light, that eventually they will perceive the light and see God. Hallelujah. And so, my brothers and my sisters, these are, this is one prominent somebody who has polluted my mind even during my education. In my pre-medical 
course, I had two psychology subjects and two lo uh, logic subjects. And Sigmund Freud is so prominent. He was teaching and all the teachings almost about the world is related to Sigmund Freud. And so look at what Sigmund Freud declared regarding God. <coughs> regarding, of course, when we talk about religion, it's all about God in the Christian perspective. So Sigmund Freud's quotation is like this. The religions of mankind must be classed among the mass delusions of this kind. No one, needless to say, who shares a delusion ever recognizes it as such. And so, for him, who is so influential in the education of people regarding mind, is telling us God is a delusion. And if we will not be careful in accepting everything that they teach, then you start deviating from becoming God lover, God believer, to eventual enemy of God, that now you become part of Sigmund's group, declaring that there is no God. Another quotation from Sigmund Freud, it says, it could be ventured to understand obsessive compulsive neurosis as the pathological counterpart of religious development to define neurosis as an individual religiosity to define religion as a universal obsessive compulsive neurosis when i taught <coughs> when i taught the subject about is Scrupulousness is scrupulousness. And scrupulousness is all about being obedient to God. And I found out that scrupulousness in the dictionary is defined as obsessive compulsive neurosis. And I was laughing and I was saying, ah, that's the reason why the first Corinthians is talking about. In the book of 1 Corinthians, it declares that God chose the foolishness of this world so that He can shame the wise. And then I, I didn't realize much about the impact of that. That's the reason why, my brothers and my sisters, from now on, I will not accept that I am a OCD, that I, in my scrupulousness, my, my, my endeavor, my passion to love God, to obey God is not an OCD. It is not neurosis. This is what God wants me to know. That I should love God. That I should love people. That I should do the job that I am assigned to do. And so this Sigmund Freud calls people who are obedient OCD. You suffer from neurosis. You are cuckoo. But praise the Lord, don't ever accept that. That is the working of the enemy, putting cuckooness in our mind. That's the reason why Romans chapter 12 verse 2 is telling us, don't conform on what Sigmund Freud is talking about. Don't believe that. Don't believe that. Believe the Bible. Believe the Word of God. And most of the students still believe that you are a, a, a product of the monkeys. That's the reason why sometimes even Christians, they have maybe the character of a monkey. And hopefully, praise the Lord for those who have got out of the monkeyism in their lives. That now they are more declaring, I have Jesus. I, I, I have the character of Jesus. I am the light, I am the soul, I represent Jesus, and I know whom I have believed, and I am not ashamed of the gospel, my changed life, and I will promote my gospel lives. Hallelujah. And so, my brothers and my sisters, another one of Sigmund Freud's quotation, he said, 
I regard myself as one of the most dangerous enemies of religion, in particular Jesus. And I think I googled regarding Sigmund Freud, and Sigmund Freud's parents were all religious people. And I was watching a debate regarding somebody whose name is Prost and Dr. John Lennox. And the guy, Prost, he said, we came from Cambridge. My, 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 my grandparents were from Cambridge. They are the, the Quakers. And whether you believe it or not, the Quakers are this, the, the Puritans. And they went to America. That eventually he went to university. And then encountered a lot of people imputing all those that destroyed his faith in God. And he actually would say, I'm not actually an atheist, but I am agnostic. But definitely Sigmund Freud is an atheist. And he thought that he is the most dangerous enemy of religion and true enough. Up to now, in the schools, those teachings of Freud are being taught. And so, for you students, be careful and always believe the Word of God that we teach you. Believe in the blood of Jesus, that before you go to school, you declare the blood of Jesus. You declare that the full armor of the Spirit in your lives. That nothing can permeate your brain, your heart, to start disbelieving. Rather, you will become, hopefully, how I wish that there will be more people among us who will stand our position in God. That we will declare, Jesus is Lord, and He is Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And look at this declaration or another quotation. It says, If God is God willing to prevent evil but not able, then He is not omnipotent. Is He able but not willing, then He is malevolent. Is He both able and willing, then whence cometh evil? Is He height? able nor willing then why call him God see how 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 they have gone out how they have become blind my brothers and my sisters that's the reason why testimonies are very important and I praise God for those testimonies that they have experienced the healing from God the miracles of healing, the miracles of changed lives, and everything that we testify of the greatness of God invalidates this quotation. And so let us continue to declare, Amen, Hallelujah. And look at this. This is funny, but this is this is something that you students, especially, will be very careful to to understand to see. It says. They told me to use the brain God gave me. And he said, I did. Now I am atheist. Ironic, isn't it? My brothers and my sisters, yes. In the schools is where we are attacked by all the attacks of the enemy. And he uses all these teachings. All the Darwinian, all this uh, Pruid uh, teaching and so forth and so forth really will disalign us from God. And my job is to really help you really focus on God and really believe in God because anyway, in the beginning, God. No one puts him there. He started it all and He is God and He is 
a spirit God. He is the omnipotent God. He is the omniscient God. He is the omnipresent God. And He is a holy God. And fantastically, He is a good Father. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so, my brothers and my sisters, look at this. In chapter 1 of Genesis, verse 1, it starts with God. And we have to understand that God in the beginning is God. And then, in the succeeding verses, in the creations, He spoke. And God, every time He says something, something happens. And so, my brothers and my sisters, God, if you believe, has given us that authority. Remember, in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, Jesus said, I receive the authority, and I am giving you the authority. That's the reason why, my brothers and my sisters, we have the authority to say to Satan and his demon, Go away! And they will go away. But you have to believe in God. You have to believe in His Word. You have to believe in what the Bible is telling us. You have to believe that your mind is supposed to be covered by the helmet of salvation. You are protected. That nothing the enemy can throw on you, you will receive. You are covered. And what is in there is all about the mind of God, the mind of Christ. And the mind of Christ is always victorious. Even in the beginning, He already showed us prophetically that He won the battle. And later on, you will find out. That it will say, I will say, all about this is all about a battle. That's the reason why, my brothers and my sisters, I pray to God <clears throat> that all of us will know that we are believers of a God who is a triune God. And God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And in the book of John that we just have, read as part of our devotion it says my father and i will be in you dwell in you and the holy spirit together will be in us the totality of the triune god is in us and so we have that authority my brothers and sisters but you have to believe and you have to have gone through a process before you can do this. Because later on you'll find out <clears throat> that we, in the beginning, were created perfect by God. God created Adam and Eve in a perfect humanity, unblemished by sin, to live and to enjoy on earth Everything is supplied. And then God said to them, and God said to them, and I will read. Let us read so that you will get into it. <coughs> Sorry. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, 27, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creep on the earth. God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him male and female, he created them. And then, the next verse is in 28, verse 28, then God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, 
have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on earth. That is the perfect situation, my brothers and my sisters. During that time, before they disobeyed, because in Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17, this is what God has done for them. There is always a test of faith, a test of obedience. And there is only one that God prohibited them to ever come near or even touch more than even more to eat. And so in Genesis chapter 2 verse 16 and 17 it says, And the Lord God commanded the man saying, Every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. And so immediately I would like to point to you about the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And I was that person during my sinful time. I was a bad human being, but also doing good things. And I thought that is the way it is. I was so blinded. I thought I was doing well. Doing bad, doing, doing evil, doing good. But I realized when I started learning about the scripture, and I said to myself, ah, that's the reason why I was like that because I was practicing what my poor grandparents have learned. They learn about the good and the evil and they practice it. But praise the Lord, my brothers and my sisters. Yes, there is a surely a penalty of death. And man, in the eyes of God, had become separated from his presence. The meaning of death is separation from the presence of God. They did not die physically, but they died spiritually. In the same sense, my brothers and my sisters, for all of us now, as the scripture is telling us, in Romans chapter 3, it says, For all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. We have all become sinners. We, in the eyes of God, are all dead. But praise the Lord, there is Romans chapter 6, verse 23, especially in the second part of it. But in the first part of it, it says, For the wages of sin is death. And I hope you understand that. Yes, when the Bible says that we all are dead spiritually, separated from God, blinded by the enemy. My brothers and my sisters, Jesus is so loving. He being God became human. Philippians chapter 2. And he did not argue about relinquishing his glory, his divinity to become human. To become fully human so that he can suffer the same suffering human times are suffering but more than that suffering he went to the cross to die on the cross through a very horrible kind of death dying on the cross and it is all because God wants us to receive back life. And to see that, my brothers and my sisters, there is a process that you have to go through. And so, my brothers and my sisters, I want, I want to go back and talk more about God said. And I hope to all of you, especially those going to university, to the school, and as I've said, you will be bombarded by all the teachings that will declare that there is no God, that you all started from nothing. You started from nothing, actually, 
and then this nothing will become a monkey that eventually the monkey becomes you and I hope you don't believe that because God said he created you and me in his image and the reason why I said there's many people who seems not to understand this not to see it clearly how wonderful we have been created by God and if you I'll go back if you go through the process I am I will be talking about later on you will regain that image if today you are still that same person who is suffering from guilt, suffering from depression, there is no joy in your lives, there is always a struggle in your lives, there's too much pain in your lives. My brothers and my sisters, you need to do something to regain how God created us in His image. God is good. God is full of joy. God is the God of peace. God is the God of rest. And so if we have that image back to in ourselves, the image of God in ourselves, you and I, you will be experiencing what God intended us to experience in the beginning anyway. Anyway, hallelujah. And so, my brothers and my sisters, also I would like to emphasize in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, 27, that God created man in his image and he created man and woman. That eventually this man and woman become one. The first institution of the marriage. And God initiated, orchestrated, officiated the marriage, the first marriage in the history of mankind, in the lives of Adam and Eve. And so, immediately I will say, you and I should be clearly, you see yourself, if you are a man, you are a man. You are not somebody else. If you are a man, you are a man. There is no in between. If you are a woman, you are a woman. If you are a man, you have balls. If you are a woman, you have eggs. My brothers and my sisters, you have to understand this. Because this is very important. This is where now the corruption of our minds is being bombarded. There will be many people who will say to you, Oh, that's not politically correct to tell your people, to tell children. You are imposing on them. You are controlling their lives. Yes! Because God wants to control us. How will I ever say that you, Jem Jem, is a mm -hmm. Bekla? But I will say to Jem Jem, you are a man and as well you, Justin. And so my brothers and my sisters, if you see this, you will clearly see yourself in the eyes of God you see God my brothers and my sisters I hope all this bombardment of the enemy regarding male and female we will overcome because we believe that there is God in the beginning and God said and he created man in his image and specifically said, there is man, there is woman, there is no in between. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so, my brothers and my sisters, let us move forward. And this is what the process I was talking about. Yes, maybe you don't know who you are actually. In the eyes of God, you don't know. And I suspect all the time, if somebody is not receptive of what we are talking in the church, if somebody who hear 
and he always sits there and listen but still not responsive to the demand to the mandate of God as I will always say there is a work for us to do and the number one work that we have to do is to love God but before loving God to know that there is God and that God is Lord before we can ever love Him. We have to acknowledge Him first. Know that there is God. And Genesis chapter 1, it starts in the beginning. God! And so my brothers and my sisters, we need to love God. With all our heart, with all our mind, with all our souls, with all our strength. And to love the others. These are the things that God wants us to see, my brothers and my sisters. And I suspect when people, when people do not respond, it's either they are still partially blind. They still are blind. They don't see clearly. But if you see God expected of us to respond committedly, lovingly, devotedly, because God is almighty, is sovereign. He is the creator of all things, the owner of all things, sustainer of all things, and He owns us. That's the reason why we have no other reason to, to, to really say, I don't want. If you know and believe God, expected of us that we can do what He wants us to do. But praise the Lord! You might say, how can I do that? Look at this. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. This is not in the slide. It says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Yeah? So for you, if you are saved, you have to work it out to, so that it will, it, will, it will grow. And praise the Lord, for Pagasa Center, we have this equipping process. And we have leaders who will take care of everyone. If we do that, then we grow in the knowledge and we grow in our salvation that we mature. But look at this. In verse 13 it says, God will give you the willingness and the strength to do His purpose. Imagine that. All that you will do is just say, Yes, Lord. Yes, Holy Spirit. I believe you. I partner with you. Work in me. And so, I hope, my brothers and sisters, whoever you are, up to now, you, you are difficult into doing what we are really are doing as a church. I will, I will be lenient, maybe, to you if you are a baby. But if you have been, if we are expecting, or I am expecting you to have grown, my brothers and sisters, you need to rise up. That's why I was teaching that I said, let us let us imitate the Thessalonians because the Thessalonians, look, they have a, a leveling up, increasing faith. And of course, Paul started with Genesis chapter 1 and in the beginning, God. Their faith has to start from God. And then, eventually they said, and, and, and eventually the Bible says, and their labor of love is growing. And of course, their love first to God and loves for the others. And then Paul said, and their persevering hope, because I said they are going through persecutions. They continue to believe despite of affliction, circumstances, and persecutions. That how I wish we can become like them. That they were models. And this is so beautiful. It says, Paul said, 
you are influencing people, you are impacting people that I don't need to go there to tell them you have become a model, a pattern. And in the end, it says, and they were talking about their gospel lives. And they were talking about their testimonies. And they were so expectant of Jesus. Jesus who is coming soon. My brothers and my sisters, how I wish we can attain that level that that Thessalonians have attained. And I am trying to review again the seven churches in the book of Revelation. There were five who were so that God is displeased, but there are only two who God was pleased with them. And the church of the Philadelphia and the persecuted church. And now you put that persecuted church and the and the Philadelphian church seems to be pointing like, hey, these are the Thessalonian believers. These are the Thessalonian uh, Christians. My brothers and my sisters, I hope you are getting this. And for you, just in case, I am true in my suspect that maybe you have not gone through the process yet. And I will tell you that there is a process. It is a provision of God. We have to go through it so that we will see and that we will be able to enter into the presence of God. Remember when I said death is separation from the presence of God. If you go through this process, you will see, oh, there is a way, there is there's somewhere, there's a door that I can get through. And then suddenly you can enter and now you will feel the presence of God. My brothers and my sisters, be excited. And so let us read. Yeah. So in John chapter 3, repeatedly three times, Jesus said this. And this is the process. Jesus answered and said to him, Nicodemus, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then Jesus again for the second time said and answered, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And again on the third, Jesus said, you must be born again. And so my brothers and my sisters, if you have heard this, and eventually you will say to yourself that God is speaking to you, you, you feel something in your heart, there's something in your mind agreeing on what we are talking about, then later on you will say, Jesus, I need to see. I need to enter. I need to be born again. And Jesus will do it for you. The power of the Holy Spirit will just manifest in your lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so, again and again, for you to see clearly, we have to begin with God. And so again, it's all about God. If God is accepted Believe on. Wonderful things will happen in our lives. Amen. And so, I talk about the battle. And this has been going on since the snake who represented Satan, deceived Adam and Eve. is all about the enemy and God. And the enemy, of course, is Satan. And today's perspective is all about materialism and about theism, about God, and spe specifically about Christianity. 
where you are going in schools or maybe anywhere you will be bombarded bombarded by this teaching you have come from nothing to become something from a simple cell to becoming a complex monkey to even more complex human being that you are so complicated that you have no understanding of God. That, what, that is what is all about materialism. That's all about people who promote this from nothing to a complex thing. And their minds have become complicated that they cannot understand, they cannot believe about God. While my brothers and my sisters, God is so big to start creating the universe and to create the earth, our perfect environment, so that God's intention is that we can live in a beautiful earth in the presence of God. My brothers and my sisters, God is telling us, I created you. You did not come from a simple cell. And also I would like to tell everyone, I just heard this from Dr. John Lennox and he said, don't ever reject the Big Bang Theory. Because we thought Big Bang Theory is all about the, the Darwinian Theory or whatever. But the Big Bang Theory was quoted by a strong believer in Christ. And of course, this will be the question. There is this Big Bang Theory that people will promote coming from nothing. But what, but what we will be standing on is that who caused the Big Bang to explode? And of course, that is where God started creating the heavens. And he started creating light, isn't it? When he said, let there be light. And light came into being. And so my brothers and my sisters, just to be aware that the battle we are on is initiated by Satan. And today's uh, teaching is all about materialism. But we will stand our ground that in the beginning there is God. And God's word is powerful. My brothers and my sisters, heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will remain. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so, there are three things that I would like you to remember so that we can win this battle, especially you students, especially you who are going and being influenced by others regarding all this materialistic materialism, naturalism, atheism, agnosticism, and so forth, and so forth. And so, my brothers and my sisters, number one that you have to really be confident is about the book of the Genesis. And in general, the whole scripture. And mind you, the original scripture is an infallible book. Meaning to say, there is no wrong that is attached to it. Though we are now using the translations and if you find something that is not, uh, that is wrong and we will always say because maybe of printing errors, yeah, topographical errors, but I would like you to believe. My brothers and my sisters, the Bible that I am using is a New King James Version. In the beginning, I was using the King James Version. I read a lot of the Bible many times on different translations. But the Bible, when I believe the Bible, it changed my life because it is the Word of God. And so, let me just point to you, every one of you, about the Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 regarding God. Amen. And so let us be confident to stand our ground regarding 
the book, the Genesis, in particular today, verse 1 in chapter 1, that says, In the beginning, God. And so I would like to immediately tell you, our faith is not a leap of faith to nothingness. Our faith is evidence-based, whether you like it or not. You have to be standing your ground. And you will say, my faith in Christ, my faith in God is evidence-based. And of course, there are theories how to test truth. And this is being used by many people, scholars, in the theological sense. And these are the tests of truth regarding correspondence, regarding coherence, regarding reality. And so like for example, the test of truth of correspondence. So what will be your, your proof? And we will say, our proof is the scripture. And mind you, my brothers and my sisters, the story of Abraham is a 4,000 years story. And the story of Jesus is the story that Jesus, who is, who is man, is a story of 2,000 years. But let me just point about Abraham's story. 4,000 years. And of course, you will, you will say, how will I believe that the Bible is authentic, true? That this is the Word of God. And I will tell you immediately, there are three kinds of people who believe about Abraham. And they are still existing up to this time. And they cover majority of the humanity anyway. And so they are the Jewish people. Then they are this, the Muslim people. And there is the church. And together, this group of people will really amount to a big amount of numbers of people. Considering that the population of the world is around 7 or 8 billions. But my brothers and my, my sisters, what I'm pointing, these three kinds of people are believing in the story of Abraham. And the story of Abraham is written in the Bible. Alright? And so, it is coherent. There is, there is, there is, there is, is it, is, is it a reality? Is it, is it, can you prove it? Of course. There is a story of the three kinds of people who believe in Abraham and they still exist. They still believe in Abraham, in all that maybe Abraham has been teaching them. And then, and then we have these archaeological findings. Go to the, to, especially in the UK, go to all this, especially in the Museum of London, what is the other museum in London? There are two London museums that we have a lot of archaeological findings regarding the Bible. And then, of course, the histories, books written by believers and unbelievers, just imagine that. And so, in the rule of courts, there is what is called the preponderance of evidences. And so, if I have a lot of evidences, and I am trying to present to you, and it will make my truth claim to be coherent to the correspondence, then I am leveling up my my position that the truth I am telling you is really valid. But thirdly, there's, this is something, this is something. Thirdly, is about reality. It's all about pragmatic witness. And I am one who have been born again. And I am one who is in the past is so sinful that when I am born again, I am a new creation in Christ. And that I learn from the scripture, from this correspondence that I am talking about, that I will be an agent, I will be an ambassador of the kingdom, 
And that's the reason why, my brothers and my sisters, me as your pastor, I used to be a very wicked human being. But because of God, because of Jesus, and because of the Holy Spirit, I have become righteous in His sight. And I am not ashamed of what God has done in my life. I am not ashamed of the gospel that brings salvation to my life. That I will not be ashamed to declare this same gospel to others. And my brothers and my sisters, that is my story. How about the other stories? How about the 12 apostles? The 12 apostles, they stayed with Jesus three and a half years. When Jesus left, and Jesus died and rose again from the dead and ascended to heaven. What did the 12 apostles, did they run away? They went out their ways because they had believed and they died declaring Jesus. They were martyred, most of them. That is what it can really give evidence. The people's lives, surrendering their lives for the cause of Jesus testify of the truth of what the Bible is talking about. What about the stories of Paul and your stories, our stories? My brothers and my sisters, believe, be confident in God. Be confident in what He is talking about in His Word. Be confident in your position as being part of His family. Be confident in the blood of Jesus that was us all, that we are redeemed, we are forgiven, we are cleansed, we are sanctified, we are to be used in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And I hope you understood that. And again, I will tell you and remind you, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God is the creator. Hallelujah. And in verse 1 of John chapter 1, verse 1 and 3, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him. Without Him, nothing was made that was made. Hallelujah. My brothers and my sisters, every time God speaks, something has happened. And mind you, God is so intelligent because the people you will be hearing from your school, they will say there is nobody intelligent enough to initiate everything that has been created. And you and I are the product of that intelligent being and He is God. My brothers and my sisters, by His Word, we are created so beautifully. And the Word, my brothers and my sisters, I would like to remind you, became flesh in verse 14. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and He we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Hallelujah. And so, my brothers and my sisters, knowing that God in the beginning was the Word, and now God became human, Jesus, now His testimony. Before, it is the testimony, it is the test about the correspondence, about the Word, about the evidences, about me and you's uh, testimonies, but now this is the testimony of Jesus Himself, written in the Word of God. And so look at this, if the Bible is not to rely on, to be confident on Jesus himself in the beginning of his ministry. And I would like to read in Matthew chapter 19 verse 4 and 5. And he answered and said to them, have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and a mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. And imagine this. He was talking about a marriage. 
And he is relating to the in the beginning God created man and woman and they will become one flesh. And I mentioned earlier about the first consummation of marriage ceremony that God initiated. And Jesus, look at this. If Abraham was 4,000 years story, Jesus is 2,000 years story to our time. Jesus is telling us, telling you, that he is testifying of that story of Adam and Eve. And again, that validates, my brothers and my sisters, what we are talking about. Believing the Bible, believing Genesis as the foundation of everything that the Bible teaches. And it all starts with God. And there's another one. In Matthew chapter 23, verse 35, it says that on you may come all the righteous blood shed on earth from the blood of the righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Beriah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. Jesus was testifying not only of Adam and, uh, Adam and Eve, he was testifying about the son of Adam and Eve and it is about Abel when Abel was killed. And then in Matthew chapter 24 verse 38 another testimony, testimony of Jesus that should make us really believe about the scripture. And I said earlier if you believe the scripture it will change your perspective, it will change your decision that you will now prayerfully, hopefully on my side, that you will now devote your lives, commit your lives, and that we will collectively will serve God because there is a job to do. And so this, this story, this declaration of Jesus is all about Noah. And it says, For us in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And so Jesus was pointing to that story. And I, want, I would like this also to point out to us, especially during this time, in our time. The Bible is telling us, Jesus will come when the situation of Noah's story is right. And today, the world we live in is as if it is now during the time of Noah. And so my brothers and my sisters, I would like you to really decide to believe. It's all about decision. It is a choice. Stop rejecting. Start believing so that you can see, so that you can enter, so that you can be part of the family of God. Hallelujah. And so number two, <coughs> that I would like you to get especially firstly the student in the life class this is for you but of course for all our students who will be going back to university to be bombarded by all the teachings of the enemy that you should remember that man was created in the image of God expected of us to really represent God. That you will not accept that you are just religious, but you will declare boldly with confidence because the Bible says so, that I am godly. I am in the image of God, my brothers and my sisters. And to declare that we have a creator and God is the creator of all things. He created the heavens and the earth. He, kept, he created all the atmosphere, preparing the atmosphere so that human being will be able to enjoy the creations of God. And if you understand that, you should say, Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you that you have created the sun, the, the wind, the days and the night, the birds, the fish, the waters, 
so that I can live in a beautiful atmosphere. Hallelujah. And I would like to point to every one of us that us being created in the image of God, we are representing, as I've said, God. But the atheist will, will always teach you again. For those who will say, okay, I agree in God because there are many gods anyway. But you and I will say, our God is the God of all gods. And the teaching of these people that will pollute your mind, they will say, the God that you believe is connected, is part of the universe, is part of His creation. My brothers and my sisters, this is a deception because God is God. He is separate from His creation. He is not part of the universe. He created the universe. The universe has nothing to do with God. It is God who made the universe. And so the people who will pollute your mind will say, oh, he is part of the he is part of he is part of the creation, the pantheism. And so you have to be aware of that. And my brothers and my sisters, he is distinct. He is different. He is so pure, so holy, so wonderful, so glorious that nothing is compared of him my brothers and my sisters. And so, God also is a person. Remember, there is part of the Genesis that when He created Adam and Eve, there is one word there. And He said to them, let me check. And He said to them, because this is very important for you to understand, my brothers and my sisters. Because if you understand this, look, in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, it says, Then God blessed them, and God said to them, And for you people who still are rejecting when we tell, when we tell you, God spoke to me. I hear His voice. I hear the Spirit. I hear the Word of God as I read the Word of God. My brothers and my sisters, God is a person. He can communicate. He feels. He becomes joyful when we obey. He has pleasure when we obey. He is sudden we will when we disobey. Because my brothers and my sisters, He is an intimate. He is a relational God. He speaks to them. And that is very important for you and me. Especially you who seems not to enjoy doing your devotional lives. When you understand that God is speaking and He spoke to them and up to now He speaks, we, you, should enjoy doing your devotion because that is in the presence of God. Listening, hearing. My brothers and my sisters, that is so fantastic. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, <clears throat> that's about God as being intelligent, so, repeatedly, I will say, God is the beginning and the end. And now, I will rise up something to terrorize you. And this is something. We have to walk in the fear of the Lord. We have to walk circumspectly. For what? We have to wait for the Lord. For what? Because there will be what is called the end times. And the end times you will not like. The end times, my prayers that every one of us, when that end times comes, we are gone. We are raptured, snatched by God towards heaven in His presence. Because the end times will be so difficult. And if you read Revelation chapter Five down to the end, it you you will see what will happen, and I don't want every one of us to be part of that end times tribulation period. And so 
Let me just point out something very important in our perspective during our time is all about the ecological disaster. And if you are interested, the COP conference will be in October. I think it will be held in United Kingdom. The COP, COP conference is all about the ecological disaster happening. And they are talking about what all these fires going on. What are all these sudden flooding in the European areas. Sudden big earthquakes happening. My brothers and my sisters, these are going to happen. And so you have to really get into this. In the believing. So that your faith will grow. And mature. So that your labor of love will rise up. So that your hope will continue to, to, to manifest to many people. My brothers and my sisters. There will come a time, and this is in Matthew chapter 24, 35, it says, Heaven and earth will pass away. And the way it will pass away is so difficult, my brothers and my sisters, if you go and read Revelation. But the word of God will not by no means pass away. And in Isaiah 65, verse 17, just to give us hope. This is about the new heavens that God will create. And he said, for behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. And the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. And then in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 13, my brothers and my sisters, it says, Nevertheless, we who believe... According to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which the righteous people in his righteousness will dwell. There is something God is preparing for us, my brothers and my sisters. But you need to believe. We need actually to imitate the Thessalonian believers. That we can qualify in that Philadelphian church and the persecuted church among the seven churches in the book of Revelation 2 and 3. Oh, hallelujah. I pray to God that every one of us will really be ready and no one of you will be left because you have lost sight that today you are gaining sight it is becoming clearer and clearer that you in the end will say i believe and lastly that i have to tell every one of us especially those who are going to university because you will be taught many things that you and i are so unique creations of god and you are so valuable in the eyes of god that we are bought by a price the blood of Jesus, the life of Jesus you are so valuable precious to God that God doesn't want any one of us to really run away to be lost and to be in hell you are so loved that God went to the cross as a human being to die for you and me my brothers and sisters, that is how valuable you are. And when you go to the school, remember, I remember, suddenly young people will be talking about suicide. Then suddenly people will just so influenced by the world that people, especially the young people, they go into this wickedness Suddenly they are believe uh, they are believers suddenly they, they 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 are now manifesting some kinds of wickedness. Boys and girls now doing something that is not right in the eyes of God. Suddenly they are in the universities, now they are indulging in illicit sex. Now suddenly when they were still in their families, they were still 
doing what their parents and the church are telling them suddenly when they are in the universities now they start doing many things alcohol women drugs gangsterism and so forth and so forth but what saddens me is that there are even young people who are being taught that they in their problems in their desperation they just commit suicide and of course for you in United Kingdom you know that there are some uh, videos or maybe internet connections that teach how to commit suicide my brothers and my sisters whoever you are you are so valued by God and then maybe among you among you God values even a baby who is just a newly formed egg and sperm was become an obum that the people will say oh abort it because they don't value human being created in the image of God my brothers and my sisters God is telling us you are so important you are so valuable and I would like you to have your dignity because it is very important my brothers and my sisters to reach out to others like the Thessalonians how did they ever manage to become a pattern and model if not for a dignity in their lives they knew who they had believed they suffered for what they had believed but they stood their ground their dignity was intact my brothers and sisters as human beings as people created in the image of God as part of the family of God as part of those supposed to be serving God my brothers and my sisters we have to be aware that there is an integrity as an image of God that we have to maintain that's the reason why in the book of Ephesians book of Colossians there are those teachings about how to live our holy lives in the book of Peter how we can progress like for example in 2nd Peter chapter 1 verse 3 and 11 it says yes you started from faith now you grow in virtue now you grow in knowledge now grow in self-control now grow in perseverance now grow in godliness now grow in brotherly kindness then grow in love my brothers and sisters there's progression so that our integrity as people created in the image of God will influence this dark world that we are living on and how I wish especially those who are going to the universities that instead of you being influenced by the world you will be active in telling them about whom you have believed that you will not be ashamed that's the reason why we have these wild sons that's the reason why we have this campus crusade revolution just recently my brothers and my sisters you are so valuable young people into the kingdom of God the 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 hope of this nation rests on you I am 71 years old I might not be able to reach 99 and I am I am I am believing that you will be the one to really do this job telling people there is God in the beginning and God has become human Jesus and Jesus died on the cross because of you rejecting him but still the same God that will provide a way for you to get back into his fold all that you have to do is to go into the process of new birth my brothers and my sisters and for you my brothers and my sisters the old timers let me remind you how valuable how unique you are God called us for a purpose and he authorized us given the name of Jesus that you and me every time you say in the name of Jesus there is power there is something that the name of Jesus will do we drive demons we declare healing and they get healed 
We break through in the lives of many people. My brothers and my sisters, you are authorized. We are authorized. And we are empowered by the Holy Spirit just for you to be reminded you are so unique. You are so special. You are so powerful. Power pack. Because God is powerful, omnipotent, and He doesn't want His children. He doesn't want His created human beings to be kicked around by the enemy. But rather, we will be kicking around, kicking out Satan and all his demons from our lives. Hallelujah. My brothers and my sisters, in 2 Chronicles chapter 5, 17 to 18 or 19, it is not only that you are created a new beginning. You are a new beginning. You are a new creator. Your past has gone. All, new, all things are new. You are, as Bishop Uriel reminded us, you are the agents of reconciliation. There is a job to do. And so for you students who are going to university, your job is to do everything in prayer, in fasting, that you prepare yourself and you are in the equipping process. That's the reason why we equip you so that you can be effective, powerful tool of God as an agent of reconciliation. We are commanded to be the ambassadors of the kingdom, my brothers and my sisters, declaring the kingdom, the kingdom of God. My brothers and my sisters, how unique you are, how unique and special we are. It all starts in the beginning god so it's all about god and so my brothers and my sisters i pray to god that you get this that yes being a triune being you you are aware that you are a body you have to take care of your body you have to be sure that your soul is in christ be sure that your spirit is an open line with God, that every time you communicate, there is something that you will hear. My brothers and my sisters, let me just quote Billy Graham. And I believe this is in your book, Life Class Student Manual, <coughs> that says, being Christian is more than just an instantaneous conversion. It is a daily process whereby you grow to be more and more like Christ expected of us my brothers and my sisters but there should be an intention to grow you cannot be like one tamad here you have to be proactive go for the pool seek your cell leaders seek and listen to the preaching of the word study in your life class being a student, don't make this a school book all. Be serious. Talk to God. You want to learn about this life that He promised us. When He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We have to be serious with that life. His life in us, my brothers and my sisters. And then, lastly, another quotation, it says, Christian ethics are the overflow of a connected to the way of truth, anchored in the truth, of a life rooted in the life. And so, my brothers and my sisters, if Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, there is ethics, there is a practice, there is a character that we have to portray. And I pray to God that you are growing in this char character of Jesus building up. As you listen, that you are able to hear and you are attentive, you are not the focus. And I promise you, you are VIPs. If you got this, and you will say to Jesus, I want to experience the new birth. Jesus will allow that. He is always willing. Open arms. That he will say, that he will say, actually, I knock in your heart. If you open your heart for me, I will come in. And I will sup with you. I will, I will fellowship with you. 
is all about surrendering your lives to Jesus and going through the process of new birth. Hallelujah. And so today, I challenge every one of us. Firstly, I would like to challenge those new comers. If you have gotten something from this message that I preach, and you will say you want to know God, and the only way for you to really be able to see God is through Jesus. When you have entered the kingdom, there is a door. And Jesus said, I am the door. You cannot enter the kingdom unless you go through the door. And the door is Jesus. And my brothers and sisters, once you get in that door and be in the kingdom of God, you become a new creation of God. All that you have to do is to surrender your life, say to God, here I am, I want to believe. I surrender my sinfulness and I want to believe in you, O oh God, who in the beginning created all things, that I will accept and believe Jesus, who was God, who became blessed to be my Savior, to be my Lord, to be my God. And God will do the best miracle in your lives today. And so, if you are that person, you just raise your one finger to God and say to God, I want to be part of you, O God. And then, connect with your cell leader or to those who have invited you, and they will talk further about the process. But if you've done that, that's the simplest that you can do. When I was drunk, I just raised my hand. And I was doing that not, not, not in volition. I was just trying to mock the pastor. But God made the biggest miracle in my life. The following day, I am a new creation in God. It is all by His mercy. And so for every one of us, the students, especially in the life class, I charge you that the life class that you are in is not a joke. This is about the life in Christ that we have to live. Remember when we are living the life of Christ, Jesus will always talk about the Father. And eventually it becomes clearer and clearer that we see God in the totality of God who is one in three persons, the God, the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And we will enjoy His presence because He promised us in John chapter 14 or 15 that the totality of the triune God will dwell in us. And that is their desire, my brothers and my sisters. So desire for it. And when you decide for it and influenced by God and God works in us, I promise you, you will go with us to reach out to others, to teach others about the way, the truth, and the life. And for all of you who are still having difficulties, I ask the mercy of God by the power of the Holy Spirit that today you will also say to God, you will say to God, Lord, I want to see clearly. I want to be there. And I don't want to be going through the end times tribulation period. So my prayer is that we will become like the Thessalonians. And I will enumerate again for a reminder that they grew in their faith they grew in their labor of love. They were so hopeful in that glorious day that Jesus will come. That they were evangelizing aggressively. <coughs> they were telling them, they were telling people about their testimonies. And they have become pattern, model. And I pray to God that we in Pagasa Center 
will achieve this as we believe God in the beginning. God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so I end up in small prayer. Father, you are great. You are God. You are the God in the beginning that you portrayed yourself as God who spoke the word and the Holy Spirit hovering over the waters. The picture that you are a triune God. And today, Lord, we want to believe on who you are. And it will start from there, O God. That as we believe, you will do wonderful things in our lives. God, thank you for your message today. 